the, the regular nine to five anymore is because I've got an incredible team of lawyers working on my behalf that are going after my mother. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the point, man? This is serious. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm getting choked up right now. Um, after seeing the pictures of Adrian Peterson and what he did to his son and thinking about things that happened to me 25, 30, 35 years ago, man, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that when I get in court with my mother that I am going to take everything she freaking has. You understand? Listen, it's going to be a joint complaint, man, because I the first thing I, I thought about when this story happened is if they went by these rules 25, 30 years ago, 35, 40 years ago, yeah, she, she'd get the electric chair. My mama would get the electric chair, man. So, so listen, and let's keep it real, man. Um, we grew up where we were disciplined. Right, okay? right. Uh, belt switches, um, you know, we grew up where we were disciplined. And I would have it no other way because a lot of my road dogs from high school that weren't disciplined, while we were being disciplined, are still back in our hometown. It was absolutely nothing right now. However, while we were being disciplined... We never had whelps. We were not bleeding. No one tried to stuff leaves. Well, at least, at, at least, it, uh, well, what, there was that one time. But, but go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Listen, so, hey, if you, hey, let's keep it real. If you ever got caught in your in some short pants or in your drawers or, or just getting out of the tub, it, it, you were gonna whelp up a little bit. Period. Up a little bit. Hey, again, man, I, I, I totally agree. And uh, I would never, ever put myself in a position to tell another parent how to discipline their child. Right. I would never do that. Right. But for a four-year-old, and I have a four-year-old right now, and I have a three-year-old right now, and they get disciplined, but there's no bit of mark on their body. Right. There's no bit of blood coming from their body. I don't stuff things down their throat, okay? Right. They're kids. Four-year-olds do things that they shouldn't do. Four-year-olds say things that they shouldn't say. If they're around the radio or around the TV, they probably see some things that they shouldn't see, and they probably do those things. <laughs> but I would never take it to the extent that A.J. Peterson took it. I don't agree. He's going to have to deal with um, the situation uh, as things get dispersed on his behalf because it is in the hands of the law now, and right. it's not going to end up good. But look, man. Um, I believe in the Bible when it says spare the rod for the child, and we wouldn't spare the rod growing up, and that's just part of life. Yeah. Hey, man. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, I'm getting texts. Before you go, man. Before you go. What? Uh, uh, double. I said double. Uh, listen, um, I got a question to ask you real quick. Okay. Why do lesbians go to sports authority? Why do lesbians go to sports authority? I don't know. Why do lesbians go to Sports Authority? Because they don't like dicks. <laughs> hey, man, you sound great, man. You sound great. And, um, Stupid. I'm going to talk to you more often, man. Don't be, don't be afraid to call me, man. I'm right here for you. There he is. Ryan Stewart right there joining me on the Two Live Stews. Uh, actually, the Doug Stewart Show. Uh, I don't know why I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> You're listening to the Doug Stewart Show because they don't go to Dick's. Now, people are not from this part of the country. I don't know if Dick's is all over the country. Dick's is a sporting goods store. I don't know what the hell you were thinking, but Dick's is a sporting goods store. That's pretty good. So that's my little brother, Ryan Stewart. Thank you for listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Uh, the number is 404-382-0338. Let me give you my quick thoughts on this Adrian Peterson thing. It's a very delicate conversation. And just like my brother said, we got our ass whooped. Left and right growing up. And I don't remember ever getting whooped by a uh, a switch by my mother and father. And it's just simply because there wasn't a bush around where they could grab a switch. But my grandmother used to bust out ass with a switch. And in the summertime, you had on short pants. I'm sure we got marks that, that we remember that, 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 that were uh, that we uh, that, that were applied to us. OK, so but four years Olds don't seem like they should get the tight ass whooping that Adrian Peterson gave that boy. So, but but the thing is this: I don't think that he had that intent to hurt or abuse his son. I really don't think so. Well, he did it. At the end of the day, he did it, so he should be held responsible. I get that. And really, this is one of those conversations where there's really no right answer. I mean, I really don't think there's a right answer because there's nothing in the world as a parent 
you can tell me that would make me change my thoughts on disciplining my kids? There's nothing. There's nothing. You know why? Because we have a proven track record, especially in the Stewart family. I'm talking aunts, uncles, grandparents of everybody who got their ass whooped, and they are very successful in life. I got uncles that are that are doctors, that are lawyers, and all of them got their ass whooping by my granddaddy. Okay? So, yes, there's probably some studies saying that it's not a good thing, this, that, and the other. I don't know about that. All I know is there's a proven track record for disciplining your kids. Do I think Adrian Peterson went a little bit overboard? He probably did. Do I think he intended to? I don't think so. I don't think so. And he he said as much in his statement saying, you know, that he's not a child abuser. I don't think he's a child abuser. I just think that also right now in the climate of the NFL, and you've heard that word thrown around a million times, in this climate of the NFL, it was just bad timing. Now, this happened a while back. But it's just horrible timing that they were going to make a scapegoat and they were going to punish all of these guys, uh, no matter whether they were uh, proven guilty or, uh, you know, uh, an investigation was done or or the outcome or nothing. It's just bad. Uh, So, I don't know. It's tough. And can we change? Can we evolve as a society and still be great people and raise great kids? Yeah, probably. I don't know. But I'll tell you what. Getting your ass whooped is definitely, in my opinion, going to make you a great person. You know, will you have some personal issues, some mental issues? I don't know. We may all have mental issues, whether we got whooped or not. So I don't know if that's a true determinant. I don't know. Uh, When we get back from the break, we're going to grab more of your calls. I'm going to have my man Walter Conkite on. Tell you who that is in a second. One of my producers. Um, He's going to talk about booty. Yeah, we're going to talk about booty. We're still taking your balls and your busters. And uh, don't forget, you can text me at 770-847-0536. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as The Doug Stewart Show. Keep it locked. So you think you're a fantasy whiz, huh? Well, prove it and make some nice scratch at the same time. Scratch is money. What do you know about FanDuel? FanDuel packs the thrill of a whole season in one week. Play in one-week fantasy football leagues for free money with immediate cash payouts. The money is real with no season-long commitment. That's huge because when your team starts to suck, you don't want to play no more. It's no more fun. Trade everybody. I've been there. You play when and how much you want. Deposit now and FanDuel will match it up to $200. Use the promo code COOLER. That's C-O-O-L-E-R. And take advantage of free loot to get your game on. FanDuel where every week is a new season. The Doug Stewart Show is off and running. But just like every company, we need sponsors. Would you always like to work with one of the livest, most dynamic, and recognized sports talk dudes in America? By the way, I'm talking about myself. Getting in on the ground floor? Well, call us at 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at DougStewartShow.com and let's do business. From the smallest company in Atlanta to the biggest brands nationally and worldwide, Shawty, people know me and the Stews brand in these streets. Holla at your boy. Once again, the number is 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at DougStewartShow.com. What is 9-11 Tax Relief? It's a tax relief company that can help you reduce or remove your IRS or state tax debt. They help stop bank levies and wage garnishments by implementing offers in compromise or penalty abatements. 9-11 Tax Relief is a tax relief company, but they're different from the others. Their experts are licensed, enrolled tax agents, and they also have more than 12 years' experience helping people solve their tax problems. They're a tax relief company that understands how the IRS works, and they'll also put that knowledge to work for you so they can get you the best possible settlement or solution to your tax problems. Highly rated by the Better Business Bureau, and they've helped thousands of people solve their tax problems. So, don't play around. Click on the link on my website and let 911 Tax Relief help you and your situation with your uncle, better yet known as Uncle Sam. We're just getting started. Count it off like this. One, two, three. I V. Intelligent rhymes with original. This is the Doug Stewart Show coming to you live from the ATL. Thank you for joining your boy. 
I really do appreciate it. We just got the phone with my little brother, Ryan Stewart. And uh, kind of gave you a window into our lives growing up, man. And I think we turned out pretty good. And so that's why I have a real hard time with this whole Adrian Peterson thing. And I think Adrian Peterson grew up in an atmosphere like we did. Um, where, you know, if you messed up, you messed up. <laughs> you know, literally and figuratively, you messed up. And I was thinking back, man, and uh, on the whole switch on, on bare skin and this is not a lie. I, I put my right hand up to God. My grandfather was a minister and people from my hometown, the great city of Monks going to South Carolina. Uh, people know my grandfather. My grandfather, Isaac Norman Stewart, was a minister and he was also a principal. OK, so you talk about a disciplinary. You got the double dose. He was a preacher, a minister, and he was a principal actually started an elementary school. Yes, Whitesville Elementary, my grandfather actually started that school. If you go to Whitesville Elementary right now, I believe so. I haven't been there probably in 25 years, but I've heard people from my family say, if you go in that school right now, there's a picture of him on the wall still, okay? And this is a real school, a real elementary school. So I'm probably six, five years old, and we're in the front yard of his house, which is right up the street from my house. And Jesse Bryant rolls by and I'm using names because people back in the crib can get a good picture of what I'm talking about. So Jesse Bryant rolls by and I remember it like it was yesterday. He rolls by in his truck and for some reason something in my mind says pick up a rock and throw it at Jesse. And I hit his truck. And not only did I hit his truck, it was a damn good throw and aim because it hit his windshield. And it cracked his windshield so he stops. And jumps out of the truck and runs up to the, we were like doing some work in the yard. At least the other, my cousins were doing some work in the yard. I don't think anybody saw me, but he jumps out and, you know, Isaac, so-and-so, your, your, your grandson hit my truck with a, with, a, with a rock. And sure enough, my grandfather walks up and sees this nick on the, on the windshield. And Jesse rolls away and I know I'm in trouble. My daddy not around, my mother not around and. You know, it's this whole community thing back then where anybody could whip your ass. I mean, it didn't even matter. It didn't have to be your granddaddy. It could be the neighbor down the street. But if you Norman grandson, okay, if you Isaac grandson, if you Ralph son, Brenda's son, we have the authority to whip your ass if you do something wrong. Okay, you from Oakley. And Oakley kids comport themselves in a certain way. So they had a little conversation. I'm like, oh, man, this is bad. This is bad. You know, I'm probably going to get a whooping here. My grandfather reaches down, and this is God is my witness. Strike me down right here. My grandfather reaches down and pulls off a branch from a rose bush. Yes, he pulls off a branch from a rose bush, just drags his arm and pulls off the leaves. Thorns are still applied to said switch. Yes, a thorny switch. You get your ass whooped with a switch is bad enough. But a thorny switch? <laughs> oh my gosh. So he commences to busting my ass with a thorny switch. Yes. And you know I was marked up from head to toe. Now, that's probably child abuse. Not saying that what Adrian Peterson didn't do was child abuse either. But that was child abuse. That's a deadly weapon. And this is no lie. You're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. So I, I, I had these whelps on my leg and I remember it. I remember it. But never did I think, growing, looking back at it now, 25, 30 years later, I actually laugh about the story now. Uh, no authorities were called. Defects wouldn't called. And my father, I think my father was fine with it. I don't remember any comments from him. I think my mother was kind of mad because I had these whelps in my leg. But she's, my, my mother not going to say anything to, to, to Isaac Norman Stewart. Okay, so they basically just swallowed their pride. They swallowed their tongue. And I just got to ask with, with a thorny switch. That's it. So that's the background we came from. But never, the point I wanted to make is never from that incident, I was very young, I, like I said, four or five or six, never from that incident that I think that, that my grandfather didn't love me. Okay? Now, may he have gone overboard? Probably. But did I ever think that he didn't love me? No. Or that he wasn't trying to do something for my benefit, that he was trying to correct my wrong? I promise you one thing. 
I'll never even consider throwing a rock at a damn truck again. And <laughs>